Okay, so here was the problem. <clears throat> this is a long wire with current, and then it makes a little loop like that. <clears throat> the question was, what's the magnetic field um, in the middle of that loop? So, although it's one wire, we really have two devices. We have a long wire and a loop of current. And they both have the same current. So how do we find the magnetic field due to those? Well, let's first think about the vector sum. So if I just have this wire right here and I want to find the magnetic field, I can use my right hand rule. So if I put my thumb in the direction of the current, my fingers show the direction of the magnetic field. So it would make uh, a loop going around this way. So uh, up here, the magnetic field due to this long wire would be out of the board. So it would be like this. Uh, down here, it would be into the board due to the long wire. But we only care about in there. So that's uh, out due to the wire. Now this goes around like that. Um, so you could do this a couple of different ways. Uh, you could say, okay, look, here's my current going around. It also makes a magnetic field going out that way. Um, or you, there's another rule um, that says if you put your fingers for a loop in the direction of the current for your right hand, your thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field. So both of those uh, magnetic fields are in the same direction. So I, I got the direction, and if I find the magnitude of this magnetic field and the loop magnetic field, I can just add them together. And that's what we're going to do. So it's not, it's not a terribly difficult problem. So this, we've already derived the magnetic field due to a wire. And if, I'm, if it's a long wire, which this is, then it's just mu naught over 4 pi, 2 times the current, and this is the distance from the wire. Uh, the magnetic field due to a loop along the axis going through the center of the loop is this. This is the magnitude. Mu naught over 4 pi. 2i pi r squared is the radius of the loop. And z is the distance along the axis. So in this case, z is 0. So for us, we would have this as mu naught over 4 pi. Uh, 2i pi r squared um, over r to the squared to the 3 halves, which is going to be r cubed. So this is going to be mu naught over 4 pi, 2i pi over r. Wait, I'm sorry. 2i pi. And, and <clears throat> a couple of important points. Um, why don't we cancel these pi's and the 2? Uh, this constant is 10 to the negative 7. So if you if you mess with that, then you're just going to have to find mu, and it's just, why well, I just don't want to do that. Okay. Um, but I always want to check. Does this have the right units? Look, this is current over R. This is current over R. They have the same units for magnetic fields, so that's good. Okay, all I have to do is put things in right now. Um, so B total, the magnitude, is going to be that mu naught over, they both have that mu naught over 4 pi, they both have i, they both have a 2, times uh, 1 over r, right, because that's the distance from the wire is big R, and then here I have pi over r. Okay, so that's the answer for the magnitude, but let's just take a little bit further. 2i mu naught over 4 pi. Uh, this is going to be, <clears throat> that is a common denominator, so I get 1 plus pi over r. That's it. Okay. Um, as you increase the current, the magnetic field goes up. That's good. Uh, for a bigger loop, we actually have, we're getting further away from this wire, so it, it would be a smaller, a smaller current. That's it.